I have the privilege to introduce the Chairman of the Board of Chancellors, Dr. James Brink. There we go. It is a terrific privilege to serve as the Chairman of the Board of the uh, Board of Chancellors for the ACR. And I wanted to share with you my priorities that I articulated to the Board last fall. I've tweaked them a bit since then, but I think they may highlight for you kind of where we are now at the halfway point of my term as the Board Chair. Suffice it to say that uh, strategy is an important element of what we do, and the strategic planning process for the College is a continuous process. Um, we're at a, a point now where I believe that brand assessment and positioning is important, and I'll come back to that in a few moments. We also I also felt it important to establish a strategic plan for the foundation, the ACR foundation, and I'll discuss how we really laser focused that on health policy research in support of, of the Neiman Health Policy Institute and other initiatives. We also believe it's important to look at possible scenarios in the future, and one scenario that we've discussed a lot today has to do with machine learning and artificial intelligence, and I'll show you how that led to the formation of the Data Science Institute that we announced earlier today. Advocacy, advocacy and economics remain such an important pillar for our college, and preparing members for MACRA is oh so important. We'll discuss a little bit of just the tremendous programs that we have ongoing, thanks to uh, our economics commissions and others who really uh, advance those uh, initiatives every day. Strengthening tools for state chapters is another important priority for me. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, support committee on uh, support from the committee on chapters, but uh, I do believe this year I will uh, double down with help from other advice from other uh, members of the CSC and BOC to do whatever we can to support the also important advocacy efforts of our state chapters. Education is critical, and I'm very um, uh, grateful to uh, Dr. Harrington and others who have really worked hard to promote the governance uh, elements of this meeting. Um, I think it's also very important that we continue to support the RLI, which is just a terrific program. We heard today with Dr. Mr. Rimmelt about the importance of leadership, and I'm so proud that we have such a strong emphasis on leadership development within the college. Within quality and safety, enhancing the robustness of the appropriate use criteria for decision support is an important element I'll come back to. Also enhancing peer learning opportunities within the college in addition to peer review. If with regard to diversity, anything we can do to increase awareness and make a difference, I'm all in favor of. Um, Kasha McCurr and her team have done a wonderful job of bringing new programs to the college, and I'll, I'll briefly go over those. Suffice it to say that the college does a lot more than these things, but I don't mean by any respect to undermine any, any other efforts that are ongoing. We have a terrific portfolio of activities, but I only hi highlight for you today areas where I thought we needed to pay particular attention. Beginning with strategic planning, uh, you may recall that we formed our strategic plan and adopted it in 2014 with a three to five year time frame. The following year in 2015, we launched a program assessment tool that I think is absolutely terrific to help us ensure that our legacy programs and any new programs are laser focused on supporting the strategic plan and ensuring that our resources are used judiciously. In 2016, the natural continuum of strategic planning is to look at one's brand and ensure that it is well positioned to reflect that strategi strategic, strategic plan, both for external stakeholders as well as those within the House of Radiology and the House of Medicine. And in 2017, later this year, we'll be revisiting our strategic plan for our mid-course mid, uh, corrections uh, as needed, and we'll be doing that at our fall board meeting. I felt it was important to look at our brand because, in part, um, some of our advocacy efforts um, aren't always uh, re reflecting the actual activities within the college. I, I should say the review of those advocacy efforts. The National Journal looks at our programs and uh, recommended, perhaps, that we emphasize practitioner impacts and access to care more than perhaps we consistently highlight patient impact. And yet I know that we put patients first all the time. Forming our patient uh, and family-centered care commission was an important element of advancing that mission. And I was really pleased to see Jim Rawson report at our board meeting yesterday a new uh, patient and family-centered care toolkit to help provide a dynamic resource to help us improve patient and family-centered care in our practice. So we do definitely impact patient care and we put it front and center so often. But I felt it was important to look at our brand from that perspective, and I formed a task force at our January meeting uh, to create, uh, to explore the approach, justification, basis, and costs for a member survey and consequences for brand re-identification. Uh, Bib Allen chairs that task force as head of the membership commission with a broad swath of uh, participation from others in the college as well. 
the initiative here is to really ensure that our brand promise is persuasive, relevant, and personally compelling to address whether it's different for different stakeholder groups and assess how broadly and intimately our stakeholders know our brand promise. And among those who have experienced the ACR, does the experience reinforce the brand promise? And so this is an ongoing activity, and our board just re-voted yes voted yesterday to continue this, uh, approaching this and looking at our brand. Um, with regard to the ACR Foundation, um, I felt it was important to really look again at what the foundation is about. And we had a retreat last summer and with a plan put forward to the board that we approved last fall to really focus in a laser-like sense on health policy research in support of the Neiman Health Policy Institute and other initiatives. Um, this makes our foundation unique and distinct from other radiology funds and foundations, including the RSNA, RSNA r and &E Fund and the Rankin Ray Society's Rankin Funds. Um, I, I don't need to tell this audience the importance of the Neiman Health Policy Institute, but suffice it to say that its mission is to study the role and value of radiology and radiologists in evolving healthcare delivery and payment systems with activities that span three broad buckets uh, to publish peer review, imaging focused socioeconomic and policy research as an honest broker, to produce actionable imaging focused information and data to support policy and practice and to support external researchers pursuing imaging focused policy oriented research. And so certainly the broad swath of activities addressed by the Neiman Health Policy Institute deserve our support and I'm pleased that we've approved this laser like focus on supporting it through the ACR Foundation. I'm also happy to report that Advanced Radiology Services from Grand Rapids uh, proposed a matching challenge of up to $100,000 last year, which the board actually also matched. And by the end of the year, we were able to raise the $100,000 from practices such as yours and individuals, which tripled up to $300,000 thanks to the double match from Advanced Radiology and the board, all in support of health policy research. Let's turn now to another important initiative, and that is um, the scenario planning activities related to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, this graphic shows the marked increase in attention to imaging for machine learning and deep learning, as evidenced by the number of publications published over the past several years. And I certainly don't need to tell you how much this has the potential to impact radiology, which really uh, got my attention in further discussions about just what are we talking about here? And, Clinical data science involves really defining use cases for machine learning, curating data to train algorithms and then test and implement them clinically. And while this may be in the purview of industry and academic centers, there's a whole host of activities at the back end that need our attention, education, issues related to adoption, standardization, regulatory issues, legal issues and ethical issues, which led us to form the Data Science Institute here at the college. Because if we don't take control of this to help guide it, then we may well be controlled or guided by external forces. The ACR Data Science Institute will build on decades of expertise in accreditation, appropriateness criteria, and practice parameters to develop standards and validation methods for artificial intelligence applications. It will put radiologists at the forefront of developing and enhancing tools to effectively guide the introduction of AI into clinical practice. Areas of focus will include defining appropriate use cases, setting standards for interoperability, evaluating diagnostic performance of developed algorithms, enhancing clinical practice of radiologists through effective use of these tools while addressing associated regulatory, legal, and ethical issues. I'm happy to report that uh, the board approved yesterday continuing this initiative with Keith Dreyer as the chief data science officer, Bib Allen as the chief medical officer, and an important element of this is an artificial intelligence advisory group that Geraldine McGinty leads this group sits within this, the institute uh, to provide input from a broad range of stakeholders to the leadership of the institute to support its mission. Those stakeholders are shown here, again representing a broad swath of uh, activities and demographics as well as constituencies within the college to provide input about artificial intelligence and machine learning to the, leaderships, the institute's leadership. Let's turn now to advocacy and economics, and as I mentioned uh, yesterday, do not mistake the number of slides as anywhere indicative of the importance of this because, in fact, it's inversely proportional. We have such tremendous efforts to prepare our members for MACRA uh, and drawing on expertise in the Commission on Economics, Quality and Safety, Informatics, and Patient and Family-Centered Care. 
our uh, work group mission is to create meaningful opportunities for radiologists to participate in imminent value-based payment models that positively impact patient care at equal or lower costs. The effort includes the development of models and measures that improve and grow the entire uh, profession to the benefit of patients. Um, again, not to underemphasize in any respect how important these efforts are, and I give huge credit to Zeke Silva and his, his commission for leading that effort. Let me turn now to education, and I'll speak just briefly about the RLI. I was so happy to, uh, to see that it was awarded the best radiologist training program. Just think about it, the best radiologist training program by Aunt Minnie uh, during the RSNA period. That's a lot of programs out there, including my own, and we tip our hats to RLI. RLI also completed modules to teach ABR milestones to 19 enrolled residency programs, and the economics milestone was just completed this past fall and winter. And with the time doesn't allow me to show you all the wonderful laudatory comments coming from institutions around the country as shown here, including one from my own, where our assistant program director just sang its praises for bringing that expertise to the residency program. Um, the appropriate use criteria for decision support um, is, is uh, elemental, and uh, rapid shifts in this space definitely warrant our attention. ACR Select is the market leader for decision support, but we must be vig vigilant to maintain its relevance and competitive edge. And the college must double down its efforts to uh, smooth out any valleys that may be present in the appropriateness criteria to ensure that ACR Select is fully robust. As you may know, ACR Select processes over 2 million provider interactions per month. It's been adopted by over 150 health systems at over 1,000 discrete acute care facilities. And thus, it's such an important, uh, so important that the engine behind it, the appropriateness criteria, is as smooth and as robust as we can make it. I'm happy to report that we've uh, really uh, increased our efforts to build out as rapidly as possible any valleys that may be present, and I thank Bill Florworth and the staff for really helping us uh, so strongly in that regard. It's well supported by educational modules, the R-Scan and Radiology Teaches uh, programs. R-Scan was approved from Part 4 credit by both the Ameri American Board of Radiology but also by the American Board of Internal Medicine. What a, a wonderful coup for us to have a radiology educational module approved by the internists. Our scans JC, JACR featured series Imaging Stewardship and the Age of Value is composed of nine articles uh, edited by Max Winterbark, and this also helps really advance the mission and educational efforts of, of what it means to do decision support. I'm also happy to report that CMS has approved our scan for seven medium weight improvement activity credits under MIPS. And focusing now on teaches, that radiology teaches is about educating medical students on decision support and what appropriateness of imaging means for radiology. And it won the American Board of Internal Medicine's Creating Value Challenge. This is another huge feather in the cap of these individuals. Many thanks to Mark Willis for uh, conceiving and, and pushing this initiative forward. Peer review is another uh, element that I mentioned I think is important for us to focus on. And I got, it, this got my attention at a meeting uh, earlier this year when um, someone from the Royal College of Radiology sort of shamed us a little bit because they th just sort of flushed their old peer review system in 2014 and replaced it with a peer learning system highlighted in this uh, graphic on the right. Um, and others have, some, uh, besides them, others have questioned the value of just straight peer review, uh, the quality and safety community um, emphasizing the need for some peer learning elements here. And so we formed a work group chaired by Johnny Kruskal and uh, with oversight by Jackie Bellow and her Quality and Safety Commission to examine the potential of a peer learning tool to supplement or expand RAD peer. I like to think of this as sort of a RAD peer expansion pack, uh, like our kids' video games perhaps, but um, I think they've come up with uh, the idea of naming this RAD Learn. Uh, I won't go into any more detail about it today, but stay tuned for something along these lines that will add more peer learning to our peer review process. And finally, the Commission for Women and uh, Diversity does uh, so many things to try and push uh, these initiatives that are so important forward. I'll just highlight three for you. Barriers to a diverse physician workforce in radiation, radiology and radiation oncology has been approved to survey our uh, membership and radiologists nationwide about attitudes and drivers that might hamper uh, recruiting women and uh, uh, underrepresented minorities to radiology. Um, the unconscious and implicit bias training will be held this uh, Wednesday at 10 a.m. I really encourage all of you to attend. It's a wonderful program that's being put on in conjunction with the AAMC, and I, I think it will be a very valuable addition to our diversity armamentarium. Finally, I'm very excited about this initiative, the Pipeline Initiative for enrich Enrichment of Radiology Program. This is a mentoring program to attract women and underrepresented minorities into radiological professions. 
This will kick off this summer with um, a number of uh, underrepresented minorities and women recruited into this mentoring program. It's a summer long uh, immersion program which will include then follow up longitudinal support for these individuals as they move through their professional training to try and keep them engaged with radiology. So again, it's been a wonderful first year. I'm so looking forward to the second year. I, these are just some priorities among so many wonderful programs at the college. Again, it's my privilege to serve as the board chair, and I very much thank you for your attention today. Thank you.